sigmoid activation function. This is the second type of nonlinear activation function in the deep learning. According to the definition that we have, sigmoid is a nonlinear activation function which is used for classification problem. It is used in hidden layers as well as in output layer of the model. So as I said, it is a nonlinear activation function. It will be used for the classification problem. As usual, it will be used in the hidden layers as well as in the output layer of the neural network model. Since sigmoid function tries to approach zero, therefore it creates vanishing gradient descent problem in the model, which max learning hurdle during training of a model. The same issue exists here with the sigmoid function as well. It tries to approach zero. It tries to approach zero because of this approach. Because of this approach towards the zero, there is a vanishing gradient descent problem in the model, which will make learning hurdle during training of the model. So an activation function which tries to approach zero will create vanishing gradient descent problem in the model, which is not good for training of a model. The model will not learn perfectly if vanishing gradient descent problem exists. So we have to avoid vanishing gradient descent problem as much as we can. According to the mathematical formula that we have f of x equals to 1 over 1 plus e to the negative x, where x is the summation of input times weight, so the expected output will be 0 or 1. According to the graph that we have, let me draw a graph here. This is a simple graph. This is my decision boundary, and here is the data sets. This is the threshold value, which is 0 0.5, and here is my 0, and then 1. This is my class 1 and this is my class 2. So it is a sigmoid activation function, a logistic regression. Look at here, this is the basic equation of the sigmoid activation function. f of x, whether you use f of x or y, it is up to you. You can use y equals to 1 over 1 plus e to the negative x. So f of x equals to 1 over 1 plus e to the negative x. This is the basic formula, basic equation for the sigmoid activation function. As usual, x is the summation of the input. This x sub i is the input times wi is the weight. Summation of input times weight plus bias. So the expected output will be 0 or 1. Now when you look to the graph, we have 0 here and we have 1, but there is a threshold value which is 0 0.5. So above the threshold value we have class 1, below the threshold value we have class 2. So these are the data sets. This is the decision boundary. Decision boundary. So class 1 has one data points, class 2 has another data points. We have divided the data sets into two classes, class 1 and class 2. That's what sigmoid function does. It is also called logistic regression. Sigmoid function is also called the logistic regression. It divides data into two classes. But make sure the expected output will be 0 or 1. When you compare it with the tangent hyperbolic function, the threshold value was 0 here in the tangent hyperbolic function and the two possible values were negative 1 and positive 1. While in sigmoid function, the threshold value is 0 0.5, and the border values are 0 and 1. So we have divided the data sets into two classes. Above the threshold value is one class of data, and below the threshold value, we have another class of data. And that's how sigmoid function works. It does classification of the data into different classes. Let's suppose this is my model, which is y equals to c plus mx. The graph is a linear graph. Now look at here, to make the data set in a non-linear form, we use sigmoid function. Here the graph is a linear, but remember we need this class of data set separately and this class of data set separately. So I need a nice decision boundary here. How it is possible? It is possible because of the sigmoid function. What sigmoid function does, sigmoid function max function non-linear. It deals with the nonlinear. All the activation functions, all the activation functions deal with the nonlinearity. So here is something linear. Now I want nonlinearity. Why? Because I need a decision boundary something like this. Something like this. Not a straight line, like this in an S shape. So this will be my class one and this will be my class two. I'm gonna apply the sigma function here. By applying the sigma function, I will have this form. So it is my linear regression, this is my sigmoid function. Look, what I did by applying the sigmoid function, I draw this decision boundary, this decision boundary. So it is something nonlinear. 
Here the curve is linear in this graph, but here the curve is in nonlinear form. So it deals with the nonlinearity. We have shifted the model from linear into nonlinear. Now look, this is my class one data sets, this is my class two data sets. So I have divided two data sets separately nicely with the help of the sigmoid function. When you look to the mathematical perspective, the equation for this graph is y equals to c plus mx. It is the equation of a linear line. It is a linear equation. But then when I applied the sigmoid function, I picked this y equals to c plus mx, this expression, and put it here. 1 over 1 plus e to the negative of c plus mx. So when you do so, you will get this kind of graph. This kind of graph which is called sigmoid function. This is the basic equation of the sigmoid function. Let me repeat it again. Sigmoid function is a nonlinear activation function. Almost all the activation functions deal with the nonlinearity. If you skip the activation functions in the deep learning, like in the hidden layers or in the output layers, the model will be a simple linear model. You don't need any hidden layer if you skip the activation function. Why we need activation functions? We need activation functions to do some nonlinearity in the model. Here the model is in a linear form. The graph is a linear. So it is not a perfect, it is not a perfect model because remember, this graph touches the data points here and the data points here. So it is not a fine graph, it is not a fine decision boundary to separate the two data classes. To do so, I'm using the sigma activation functions. The job of the activation functions is to do some nonlinearity in the model, which we can see here. Now, this graph is a nonlinear graph here. So from linearity, we have shifted into nonlinearity. Now, I can see here that this is the threshold value. 0 0.5 is the threshold value. So above the threshold boundary, we have class 1, and below the threshold boundary, we have class 2. So we have separated the two data sets perfectly with the help of the sigmoid functions. We did some nonlinearity in the activation function. Mathematical equation of this model is y equals to c plus mx. It is the equation of a linear line. It is the equation of a linear model. So in the sigma function, I have 1 over 1 plus e to the negative of c plus mx. Just put it here for the y, which is the basic equation of the sigma function. Because of this equation, you will get this kind of graph. So I hope it is clear now that how sigma function works. Now let me give you a simple neural network. If I pass the input, the possible output will be from 0 up to 1. Look at here, sigma function will give us output between 0 and 1. Like 0, 0, 0 0.5 is the threshold value. So from 0 up to 1 will be the possible output of the sigma function when you pass some input. Now again, there is a kind of restriction here. There is a kind of restrictions because we have restricted up to 0 and 1. You cannot go for 2, 3, 4, 5, or negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. You have to be restricted up to 0 and 1. You can play between 0 and 1, not more than this. So I can simply write that it is not ideal for multi-class classification problems. Because remember, sometimes we need different values like positive 5, positive 10, positive 20, 100, and negative 1, negative 2, negative 20. So it is not possible with the help of the sigmoid function. Sigmoid function only goes from 0 up to 1. So I can say that it is not ideal, it is not perfect for multi-class classification problems. The problem where you have multi-classification, you cannot go for the sigmoid function.